Hi everyone, my name is Mike Minatoli. I'm from the Career Development Office here at Yale SOM, and welcome to the Yale Student Finance Panel. Uh, I have a great panel of students here with us today, and we'll give you a chance to ask some questions in just a couple minutes. Uh, I wanted to start off by giving a brief overview of the Career Development Office, which we call here the CDO. Um, we are made up of two different teams. Uh, we have an employer partnership team and a career education and coaching team, which is uh, my team. And uh, we work with all students throughout the program who have a varying interests, whether you know exactly why you'd be coming here, uh, or you have no idea and you're looking to explore different options. We work with students, we provide a lot of resources, workshops, uh, to hopefully get you into a similar situation as my friends here on the panel today. Um, we'll connect with you over the summer so you really have a good early start on how to prepare for an internship search or really just to think about where your career might be going. Uh, I do want to kind of turn it over to them, uh, but I want to let you know first, please use the chat feature if you do have any questions and try to keep your questions general if you can so that everybody has a chance to ask. So I'm going to turn to my friends here and ask them each to introduce themselves, tell us about where they were uh, prior to SOM and where they did their internship over this past summer. So Alberto. Hi everyone, my name is uh, Alberto. So the past summer I was working at um, Acumen Fund, which is an impact investing fund that uh, has operations all over the world and in Latin America as well. And before coming to SOM, I was uh, studying as well in, in the UK. I was doing a master's in, in education and tech uh, at Oxford. And before that, I was working in, in education in Latin America. I worked for uh, the Secretary of Education of Peru, as well as for the World Bank. Uh, I'm Frank. Uh, before SOM, I worked at Fannie Mae, the uh, mortgage finance uh, from DC, if my outfit doesn't give that away, go Nats. Um, uh, did economic research for them, so kind of putting together uh, your overall economic growth forecast, interest rate forecast, stuff like that, really fun job, uh, but kind of wanted to get out of the quasi-academic world and get my hands dirty, so here at business school, uh, that's one of the main reasons why I came. Ended up this summer working for Delta Airlines in Atlanta. I worked on their corporate development team, so that's kind of their internal mergers and acquisitions team. Uh, was a whole lot of fun. Uh, airlines, as you will learn a lot about business school, is quite the uh, fascinating industry. My name is Michaela. Um, after college, I spent four years working in the art world in San Francisco at an art auction house and then at a contemporary art gallery. Um, I, this past summer, I worked in investment banking in New York at a boutique firm called Perella Weinberg Partners. I'm Onisha. Um, prior to SOM, I worked at Hulu in a couple of different FP&A roles. I started off on the corporate FP&A team and then transitioned to the subscriber growth FP&A team. Um, over the summer, I interned at Google on the Waze team in the finance function. Hi, my name is also Michaela. Uh, prior to SOM, I worked for two years as a brand strategy consultant and then had a startup apparel company in New York. Um, I'm currently a joint degree with SOM and the School of Forestry and Environmental Studies. Um, and last summer, I worked at Goldman Sachs in their natural resources group in the investment banking division. Great, thanks everyone. And you can see that we have a variety of finance backgrounds. So if you do have an interest in uh, not just investment banking, but also uh, fp &A and and corporate development, uh, investment management, please send out your questions. Um, I'm going to open this question to everyone just to get a sense of what you got involved with here uh, at SOM. But uh, can you talk to us a little bit about the different pieces that you engaged with uh, at Yale that kind of helped you to get to where the point you are at today? And maybe we'll come back this way, so maybe we'll start at the other end with Michaela now. Sure. Um, so I started off at the forestry school, so I'd say the Center for Business and the Environment was kind of my first career hub that really helped me kind of navigate the world of corporate sustainability and sustainable finance. Um, then coming to SOM, I decided I wanted to do banking, and the finance club was a really incredible resource that helped me make this massive uh, career pivot as someone who had more of a liberal arts background and a non-finance background. Um, and so the finance club, sort of in conjunction with um, CDO, really kind of guided me through the whole recruiting process, connecting you with alumni, bringing companies um, to campus, and also helping you get the technical skills you need to um, succeed in the interview process. Um, something that I found helpful was um, the consulting club, actually, in, in terms of uh, case preparation. I found that a lot of interviews um, within finance asked me a lot of case-based 
questions throughout the interview, so not a formal case like a consulting interview would be, but just trying to get an understanding of your thought process and having that really clear communication that's really thrilled um, within the consulting club uh, ended up being pretty helpful for me. Yeah, I would second what Michaela said. The finance club was incredibly helpful. I came in knowing absolutely nothing about finance, and they really give you the tools you need to succeed, weekly meetings, special sessions for technical prep. So that was incredibly helpful. And um, just the number of resources the CDO has and their connections with alumni on Wall Street and also companies that will come to campus and give presentations. I just thought that was all um, very valuable. Uh, so I, I guess a bit of a less focused path when I came here. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Um, so I guess my main hub was I developed a really great relationship with one of the coaches at CDO, um, Christine Ruzek. Shout out to her. Um, met with her all the time, kind of, I don't know, anywhere from once every, kind of once a week was probably about my average, but sometimes in the thick of things, it'd be every couple days. Other times, it'd be every couple weeks. Um, she was a great kind of resource just to bounce off ideas off of and things like that. And then from there, it was kind of... I as opposed to kind of leaning on an individual club, um, I kind of joined a bunch of clubs to get a taste of a bunch of different things, anywhere from energy to general management. I think I was in the consulting club to get a little bit of kind of quick case prep. Um, and just had a very variety experience. Also use the alumni network um, as I was kind of open to all ideas, kind of firing off a lot of cold emails and getting some, you know, getting res responses back from our alumni network. That's really engaging. and. Got my job because uh, someone at an alumni at Delta replied and was, you know, huge about getting me in the door. So a whole lot of uh, resources that I took advantage of. I also didn't have a very clear idea of what I wanted to do before um, when I came to business school, um, but I knew I wanted to do like something related to education and maybe uh, mix that with either consulting or or investing. And so the first semester, I joined the education club uh, like to get to know more about the education space in the US. And um, in the second semester, I took a couple of classes related to private capital and impact investing. And that helped me a lot to get, in, get to know more about the, the investing firms in the US and the ones that had operations in Latin America as well. So I started to uh, reach out to those companies and. In the end, I uh, got an interview uh, with one of the firms where one of the partners came to a class to, to talk. Great. Very interesting stuff. Um, so one other question that I have, and then we'll uh, open it up to any questions that you have. And again, please use the chat feature to send in any questions to us. Um, but the question I have is, as most of the folks on the webinar right now are considering applying to uh, school, and uh, I'm curious if there's any questions that you wish you had asked when you were in their seat, um, that you can kind of help them along with. Uh, we can, I'll open it up to anybody that wants to kind of jump in here. Uh, I, I, can, I can go first. So as weird as this, I think there are two things I wish, well, kind of ask yourself maybe would be a better way to think about. One, kind of uh, where you want to end up regionally after school. Um, I, my wife and I had wanted to go south. Um, I came here kind of figuring I could go anywhere. It maybe proved to be a lit, bit more difficult trying to recruit from the Northeast, trying to end up in the South. But it didn't end up mattering because I was determined and kind of focused my search that way. And that was one of the reasons why the alumni network was such a big deal for me because I wasn't able to just go down to New York and the New York firms weren't just showing up at, at um, our doorstep. It just made for a lot more work and it was something I wish maybe I had thought through, but I'm like incredibly happy to be here. And I think I, I stand by my decision to end up here in part because one of the things I asked myself was I wanted the most variety of options, people, firms, industries, and I felt Yale really brought that. It wasn't focused on a particular industry, I and I wanted to be around people who thought had different experiences from me, and I wanted the broadest exposure possible. And so that was kind of a question I was look looking for in a school, and when I found it here, I was like, I know maybe it's not in the region I want to be, but it's the kind of people I want to be around, so I kind of took the leap of faith, and it all worked out. So that's... Um, kind of the two things I was I was thinking of. Anyone else? Um, this is sort of a, maybe a bit of an abstract one, but um, I think an important question to ask is what motivates people? Because I think that's a good way to get an indication of the culture of a place. So I think at SOM, the last thing you'll hear is are things like competition or status, and that 
you're, you're more likely to hear things like impact or purpose or maybe quality of life or and I think that sort of trickles down into your everyday experience. So the finance club, for example, is just is really like a highly collaborative community where second years and peers are all really supporting each other. It's by no means competitive. And I think sort of trying to just tease out those types of dynamics is really important. And also understanding kind of what motivates you and whether that's really the right fit at the end of the day. All right, anyone else want to jump in there or I can move on? All right, so uh, this question might be a little bit directed toward Alberto, but anybody who might have looked at this could take a look. Uh, but the question was, do, you ha do we have any resources uh, to get involved with social impact investing? Uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, like, I didn't take advantage of, of most of them, but there is, a, uh, there is an impact investing club. I think there is also, um, like Yale has participated in, in some of the impact investing uh, pitch competitions that uh, at, that other schools organize, and I think we won the last two. Maybe someone exactly. else knows yep. yeah. yes, a bit more about that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we also, well, we, we, we have a bunch of classes really related to the topic, um, and also a social impact club, uh, uh, imp consulting impact club as well. So. So there are there are many resources, but but to be honest, I uh, was not part of the club of those clubs. I don't know if anyone here was part of those. Yeah, I think most of the resources that Alberto mentioned are the ones that students will mainly get involved with, and there's other opportunities at Greater Yale as well uh, to look at other schools and what's going on um, around the campus as a whole to get involved with things like that. Uh, the next question, uh, is most of the recruiting interviews slash networking done on campus or uh, at corporate offices? Um, uh, anybody that wants to kind of jump in, given your experience? I think it's a mix. Yeah. yeah. I mean, for investment banking, you do spend a decent amount of time going into the city and meeting with bankers. Um, they will also come on campus and do company presentations and have coffee chats and more informal discussions with you. and. Super Week interviews take place on campus for the most part. Um, I guess I did a lot over the phone too, in part because I wasn't, because um, where I was looking to work and the different kinds of companies I was looking at. Um, so those, you'll do plenty over the phone as well, uh, or video, you know, Skypes, things like that. Um, so it'll be a wide, a wide variety of um, things, but also a, a ton of stuff comes on campus, which was really cool. Yeah. Anything else anyone wants to add? Um, yeah, echoing Frank, um, I think all of my interview processes for Google were over the phone or over Skype. They had an on-campus presentation, but I don't think networking is something they really emphasize. Um, I think they more care about kind of like your previous experience and how they can see that translating into their workplace. Um, but yeah, mostly virtual. Yeah, I mean, I'll just kind of add on Michaela's point. With with um, investment banking, you really are going into the city quite a bit, but Yale has this nice kind of balance where because you're two hours away, you do have access to bankers, but you're not expected to kind of be on call at the drop of a hat, and you're also kind of able to step away from that and have a bit of a community here as well. So you can kind of strike a nice balance versus other schools that are just planted right inside New York City. Yeah, so as you can see, it's basically a mix. Uh, there are certainly larger organizations, or organizations that have more of a recruiting structure, the traditional recruiting path into the MBA programs or business schools that will be more visible on campus, and others that will post jobs through the, uh, through the school, or they might even come and do different events for us, uh, supply speakers, panelists, things like that, uh, that'll get us to the point where we want to be with them. And that might happen every year, it might happen every three years as their business needs come about. Uh, so the next question, are any of our participants today international students and looking for uh, some experience with that in international perspective? Anyone? I'm, I'm an international student, so I'm, I'm from Peru. Uh, and I actually did my internship in between Peru and Colombia, where Acumen has uh, their offices with, within Latin America. Um, and I would say that the recruiting process for those kinds of opportunities are more like you have to you have to find them. You have to reach out to to the companies within uh, Latin America. If you do it like if you are doing more finance or a consulting role, probably the companies will come here. But 
besides those, you you have to like reach out to those comp companies. Okay, great. Uh, curious, I'll uh, open this up to everyone. Which sector of finance do you feel is strongest at SOM? And potentially talk about some of the breadth there. Yeah. Maybe the Michaela's might be. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think investment banking is fairly strong. I think we have a good network of alumni at all different banks across the street, um, also nationwide and internationally um, as well. So there's just a lot of resources, a lot of connections you can make. And I thought that network was incredibly helpful. Yeah, I would say banking is probably the most structured recruiting process here. Um, but I do think we have a strong impact investing community, partly because of the connection with the forestry school um, and the sort of the purpose driven nature of the school. So I think probably those two, but it, I would say represented in very different ways. Great. Uh, I guess I'll add to as someone who I was not uh, looking to do investment banking. I was, I guess, for finance, I was maybe curious more of corporate finance and that experience was very broad as well, um, just from the types of companies, roles, company like geographies. Um, if they're not on campus, they're posting on, and they have someone you can reach out to and talk to. Um, I guess that was through the general management club was kind of the kind of catch-all club for me, and they did a great job of kind of every week giving you an email of all of the companies that had upcoming deadlines or were coming on campus. Um, just because it, the breadth was so large, it was kind of sometimes hard to pick things up and get stuff would get lost in the shuffle and that club itself just did a great job of kind of s sorting through all that and pulling out the stuff that might be interesting and so that that was a huge help for me um, and I felt like I wasn't miss I mean you're kind of business schools a lot and you sometimes you feel overwhelmed and so that was great because I knew I wasn't going to be missing anything I'd be interested in. I think the private equity and venture capital club also does a great job at putting on a lot of programming we have a lot of speakers come to campus um, we have a big conference every year um, so I think if you're interested in that too, there's a lot of resources available for you. Great. Uh, I'm going to lump a couple questions together here, but uh, basically a couple questions around the idea of I had no prior finance experience, internship, work professionally. Um, is it realistically realistic for me to find myself uh, in a finance role with that background? I did it. <laughs> yeah, I think you just have so much support, whether formal from clubs, informal from your peers and colleagues. Um, I mean, you're also taking core classes like accounting that are very helpful um, in recruitment as well. So I had a very positive experience with it. And um, again, coming from the art world, um, where I majored in art history in college, minored in a science, so just no finance knowledge at all. Um, it's definitely possible. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. I mean, you, you have to be committed for sure, and you have to work hard at it, but it's definitely possible. Great. Is there anything that you did kind of once you were thinking about coming to school that kind of helped prepare you uh, kind of in that finance mindset, um, or was it all kind of once you got here? I mean, I, I didn't do this, but I think if you want to do investment banking, I think getting a head start on some of the technical training um, will just say, yeah, save you some time when, once you're here and things get really busy. But yeah, I think just doing some research, it's a preparatory reading, so it, yeah, you can kind of reduce the load when you arrive. Yeah, making sure you know what it, that that's what you want to do, I think, is very helpful, too. I went in not really sure of what I wanted to do, and it was through conversations with alumni and going to company presentations that I really discovered that investment banking was what I wanted to pursue. So I think if you can get a head start on even just making sure you can identify what you really are interested in doing professionally is very helpful. Yeah. Um, for those of you that did more of a region specific or geographic search, could you dig in a little bit to kind of how you navigated that process? Um, yeah, so I was targeting California specifically. Um, so I think that entailed um, I think kind of as Frank mentioned, like it is a little more Northeast regional, um, except for super large companies. Um, so I think it was just a little more looking on my end for companies that are based in either San Francisco or LA, um, that didn't necessarily come to campus, um, or applying to really big companies that had locations throughout the country that I knew I could target, um, the West coast for. Yeah, I guess the only um, additional things I would add would be kind of maybe flesh out a little bit as far as the kind of throw mud at the wall and see what sticks as far as kind of reaching out to people, whether it's recruiters that you kind of find their email through our CDO website, whether it's alumni through the network, whether it's LinkedIn, friends of friends, you kind of just 
keep trying and I guess the advice being it only takes kind of one live person on the other end to really have things happen. I guess, you know, I probably was looking at three different companies really at the end, three different opportunities, and all three of them were because one alumni kind of picked up the phone, answered the email on the other side and got me in the door and then obviously from there it's up to you. Um, so as and someone who was bad at networking, you, you learn just through raw repetition and you kind of like don't get frustrated because all it takes is that one person and the one cool job and things happen very quickly, which was really exciting. Great. A um, question here, and I don't think anyone recruited in this space specifically, but maybe just any advice that you would have for a, an applicant that was potentially interested in private equity. Um, this question specifically comes from someone with uh, an international student with boutique investment banking experience, but we could probably talk as a whole and then maybe dig in if you have any advice for that. Um, I mean, I think the, there is a club, there's a VC private equity club, and um, we do have some alumni con connections. It's a bit more of an organic process, but um, the, the club brings like panelists to campus and does um, like training sessions and information sessions. So there is some guidance as well for that process, but it tends to be a little bit more organic and self-driven. Um, I think starting those conversations earlier on is, is always a good thing, kind of like everyone else has said. But also it happens later, right? Like it comes in the spring normally versus mm -hmm. like a, a finance or consulting, right? That all wraps up first week, second week of January, kind of that's all sorted out. And then even something like my process would happen after that. And then my private equity would be almost like March, April. And I mean, it can happen kind of last minute. You just kind of mm -hmm. keep yeah. kind of keep going with it. Um, so it's not something to like worry if you haven't figured it all out and all your friends have already. Sure. Yeah, it's something that seems to really be based on networking and making connections. So definitely much more informal than a process like investment banking. And there's also a spring conference uh, for private equity that happens, uh, I think, in March or April on a Friday, which brings a lot of that activity to campus for networking uh, and education. Um, so moving on to the next question, uh, curious if anyone has taken advantage of the opportunity uh, to take classes at other schools at Yale, uh, and if so, any highlight classes that you uh, would talk about? Did you guys take any other classes? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I, I took uh, Renewable Energy Project Finance, um, which was a really cool class. Um, kind of the best actual, for people doing finance, I uh, would highly, highly recommend it. Uh, it's kind of the best example. It's a very niche topic, even, even if you're not interested in renewable energy. Um, it puts you through all of the modeling work that you would need to do for that type of work, and then also um, the contract work. So you spend half your time in a contract studying law contracts, the other half the time doing uh, Excel modeling. And the two of those are kind of skills you would need. I mean. You talk your banker. I mean, our investment bankers can hopefully confirm, but like those are the two main things you need to do. Um, so it was. I really enjoyed it too, just to kind of get the modeling practice. And also, I mean, any job you're going to have in business is going to have a gazillion law contracts. You're going to have to be able to to cipher through. Um, so I thought it was a really um, cool experience, um, and really loved the class. Oh, it was in the forestry school. I guess I should add. Um, I'm not taking any this um, semester, but looking at some classes in spring at the Jackson Institute, um, which is our school for international affairs, um, and also potentially um, at the College of Arts and Sciences, looking at art history classes. I can offer that. Go ahead. Go ahead. I mean, I, I've taken a bunch of classes at the forestry school as a joint degree, but I also took a class at the School of Public Health that was a um, environmental protection or environmental health clinic where we worked with the community in Alabama on this t um, toxic waste site and so it was really awesome kind of active hands-on experience um, kind of quasi anthropological and, and got to kind of engage with the public health side of things which was, was really cool. Very nice. There's a lot of different opportunities. I'm relatively new to SOM and I've heard many different classes that students have taken at all the different schools so that's been interesting to me uh, being here. Um, Next question, have you taken part in global opportunities? And if so, uh, what did you do? I, I can start with, well, Yale has different opportunities to like, uh, for example, uh, travel, travel abroad and learn about the business environment in, in some other countries. I did the international experience in India the past spring and um, we got the opportunity to meet with like 
business leaders um, across three different cities in India. And um, I think it's what it was great. I think it was like probably one of the best experiences that I that I have had in in SOM so far. And what else? Uh, I did IE China last spring, and it was incredible. We got to meet with like leaders at Alibaba, JD.com, um, traveled to Shanghai, Beijing, and Hangzhou. Um, and just like a really incredible experience. You go with a professor and about 30 of your classmates. And um, yeah, it was definitely one of the highlights of the past year. Um, so I actually took part in Global Network Week, which um, is also for spring break, but you spend a week as kind of like a condensed foreign exchange student. Um, with other um, students from different schools within our um, global network, and you take classes um, kind of curated for that experience at a different university. So I went to Seoul in South Korea, um, and they do a mix of classroom experiences as well as different cultural um, and business um, company visits as well. So we went to Amore Pacific, which is like the king of all um, Korean beauty which um, was really exciting. Um, and then we also had the second week of um, spring break free, so the rest of the SOM students um, just did a week-long trip around the rest of Korea, which was great. Great, anything else? Okay. Um, so a question to, to, to those uh, kind of thinking back to your application process. Uh, how did you go about demonstrating why you wanted to get an MBA? Or maybe you can talk about the reasons why you ultimately came to business school. It looks like there's a question about how to demonstrate that on the application itself. Thoughts? For me, it was about wanting to make a career change. So I just talked about my reasons for that. Um, what I felt like I had learned so far in my career, what I felt like I was still lacking and desired in a long-term career in my future, um, and why I thought business school could help me reach that, uh, that point in my career. Um, so I, I, I kind of talked about it briefly, but I was kind of in a more academic role. Um, all of my bosses had PhDs in economics, so you kind of hit a glass ceiling of do you have a PhD or not? Um, and I actually looked into maybe pursuing that instead, and through that process was actually staying with a friend um, who was in, at the business school at UNC. I was kind of meeting with the econ department there, and I kind of had a light bulb moment that I really didn't want to go down this academic path, and I wanted to you know, work for a company where my decisions kind of made a difference on a day-to-day -day basis and kind of get my hands dirty was the cliche I used um, a lot through my interview process. Um, and so that was kind of a light bulb moment for me and another reason kind of shifted my entire process to wanting to come to business school. Um, and as far as I'm trying to remember the application itself, I don't know if you guys remember, I think there was one question kind of what are your long-term goals and, and kind of vision of maybe like where you want to be. Um, I don't remember if it was 5, 10, or 20. I don't remember the time frame. Um, but I think that was kind of the most explicit, you know, okay, so you want to come to business school, but then what? And I think that's a process, as a question you should ask yourself anyway before applying. Like, what, what are you going to use this degree for? What is your kind of vision going forward? Um, so that was probably the best direct case. I mean, I know there's the other, I assume they have the same question about what your biggest commitment was. Um, I mean, you know, that needs to be your own personal statement, but I guess as far as... <coughs> Or in the application, that kind of secondary question about your kind of long-term vision probably be the easiest way in writing, and then you'll have the interview process as well. Great. Curious if anyone would be interested in sharing why they specifically chose SOM. Because it's the best. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so uh, for me, I knew that um, I wanted to go to a school that would have more of a community feeling. Um, so I knew I didn't want to go to a super big school where um, you're kind of limited in the kinds of people you would be meeting based on kind of like the professional clubs you're in or solely your cohort. Um, I also knew that I wanted to um, be at a school that had a lot of different kinds of people with a lot of different backgrounds. And I felt like Yale is um, definitely a school that has that, probably more so than a lot of other schools. Um, and then I also personally knew that I wanted um, I wanted to be around a student population that was like invested in getting to know you for for you, not just necessarily like 
professional networking, there was more of a personal component for that. And I felt like that was something that was definitely conveyed in um, any interaction I had with the school throughout the application process. I would I just have one quick thing I would add as a shout out. Um, I was conscious my uh, my wife was kind of moved to wherever we went to school, and so we were very cognizant of how the community integrated partners um, into the community, and we were really really impressed with the openness of Yale and how she can take classes, join the clubs, come to all the social events um, of which she has done, and you know she's definitely kind of has a bunch of friends. The partner community itself was very vibrant and strong, um, in amongst themselves. Um, and so that was a big positive for us, just particularly um, to go to, to my experience. And I would fully agree with um, Anisha, too. Um, it's kind of sticking with the application process here. Question about what can an applicant expect from the uh, interview or anything to prep to get to that point, your experience? I don't remember specific questions, to be really honest, <laughs> but I think that. The gist of the interview really felt like the interviewer genuinely just was trying to get to know me and understand what motivated me. And so I remember the person really asking very genuine follow-up questions around kind of where these like core, kind of, I guess, drivers of my life, where they originated from, was it because of my childhood or like my you know intellectual exposure. Like I, there was a, there was just, it was really just a genuine conversation that was really trying to kind of get to, underst get to understand me and whether like I was a good fit for the culture of the school. So I think just be prepared to be open and um, really show your passions because I think that will uh, carry you really far. Yeah, I had a great experience. I was, uh, I was with another student for like half an hour and we t discussed my resume a little bit but then really delved into you know, what I was looking for in a community, why I wanted to do go to business school, what I wanted to do while I was a student at Yale, how I was going to take advantage of the resources here. So it was, it was good. In, in my case, um, I felt that the, that the school was trying to help me in the interview, actually. So I'm a Latino. I used to work in education, and I was interviewed by... Um, uh, by a person with a Latino, by a student with a Latino background who used to work in, in education in the U.S., so it was also like kind of a, a conversation more than a very structured interview. Great. Um, so, uh, kind of approaching the point where you've been here for maybe three quarters of your time, uh, nearing the end. Uh, the question here is, what are some of your favorite things about Yale SOM at this point? Would have you enjoyed events, contact, community? I think the people are really great. I think that really defines your experience wherever you end up going to business school. Um, I think our community is very close. And then within that, I mean, you can just find so many people that share similar interests with you. So whether that's in professional clubs or more extracurricular clubs, different kinds of events, informal gatherings, um, I mean, just the people you meet are really incredible and end up being some of your best friends. And you end up traveling a lot with them. I just got back from a trip in Colombia with like 45 of my classmates. So that was definitely one of the highlights as well. I'll give a shout out to the hockey club. Um, it's one of the more popular clubs on campus. Um, you do not need to have played hockey. I cannot make that any more clear. People <laughs> range from never having been on the ice to um, people who played in college or high school, which is great because they can help coach. Um, much more of a social club and, you know, kind of wide range of skills and, and abilities. And we play every Wednesday, have a great um, kind of finale, the Gartska Cup, where the first years play second years, the whole school shows up. Um, it makes for a very rowdy game. Everyone, there's a whole, now there's a whole uh, crew of boosters, they call themselves. They just come and watch practice and cheer more or less when you fall, um, <laughs> which is a lot of fun. Um, so just as an individual experience, it's really great. Highly, highly recommend um, Great, really fun thing to do. And my wife plays too, and she loves it. So um, that's been that's been a highlight for sure. Good stuff. Uh, anyone want to jump in? Hmm, good. Okay. Um, so switching back a little bit toward the finance space, uh, anyone interested in talking about resources available uh, for finding uh, global jobs in the finance sector? I know we do with the finance club um, international treks. So there's a London trek. I believe there's a Hong, Hong Kong, Kong trek. Yeah. Um, also, just 
reaching out to alumni both at the banks in New York who can connect you with some more of the regional banks um, or reaching out directly to some of the regional banks. Um, I just think there's a lot of resources. We have connections all over the world, so I think that's very accessible and doable. Great. Curious, I think some folks have mentioned this earlier. One of the questions is, given our proximity to New York City, um, what have you, like, ha does that help in the process? How have you taken advantage of New York City in your search? Um, or, or I would even throw in, just in your personal life, have you t how have you taken advantage of New York City? Well, I, so I actually have an apartment in New York City. My husband lives there, so I go back and forth quite a lot. Um, I think that, again, like I said, the two-hour distance is really perfect because it gives you enough separation where you can really be sort of grounded here and have the sort of the benefits of the community, but it is accessible enough that you can go in on a weekly basis and meet with alumni or, have, or go out, you know, and see a play or go to dinner or see friends. Um, so for me, kind of the relationship with New York has been really close, but it's also been kind of distant enough <laughs> that I'm happy to be taking a little bit of a break at the same time. <laughs> I mean, I know it's compare that to friends at other schools who have to fly into New York, especially if they're doing banking recruiting. They're flying in every weekend of the fall, and it just sounds like a nightmare. Um, and so, you know, being able to hop on a train and get down there quickly, I think, is, is a huge leg up for, for Yale students, for sure. And not also be on call at all times. Actually, um, just we're talking to people from CBS, and they're, I mean, they're, their phone goes off and they have to get out, you know, they've got to be there in half an hour, whereas things are a little more scheduled coming from Yale, yeah. roughly speaking. Mm -hmm. uh, potentially a question directed toward Michaela and Michaela. Um, could you talk a little bit about investment banking diversity programs that you may have taken part in? Yeah, so there's, um, there's a, a few different kind of ways in which I, I guess female diversity is supported in the process. Um, there are diversity days where you get to go and meet female bankers and, and kind of get a better understanding of the firm on a little bit more of a kind of intimate basis. Um, and then there are some early recruiting timelines that are available to, to female candidates as well. Um, and then there's also a lot of support from second year bankers in, um, who kind of can guide you through that process as well. Yeah, and there's also different scholarships you can apply to or fellowships. Um, actually, I think it was an advantage <laughs> being a female in the process. Um, so I found a lot of support wherever I looked, and it was um, yeah, it was really helpful. Great. Uh, another question about the process. So uh, someone on the panel here, or someone from the audience, was curious if any of you had done campus visits before your application. Um, and what was your experience in, in kind of doing that and how it potentially helped uh, your application? Oh, uh, I did. <laughs> so, uh, no, I, I definitely, I visited, um, I guess, all three or, f I guess every place I ended up applying, uh, I visited. And that was in part because um, my wife and I were kind of also seeing where she would want to be um, and end up. So that was kind of a big part for us and wanted to get a feel for the city. Uh, or you know wherever the, the school was, um, there's a lot of formal stuff the school does too. Uh, you know, like a kind of official days you can reach out. There's you know prospective students kind of visiting classes all the time, which is uh, fun. I remember that very clearly from my days. And also, you'll get a good feel for the campus through the interview day. Um, and then if you are well, you'll all get in because I'm sure you're all smart, brilliant people. Um, but there's also a welcome weekend day too, which I would I would really suggest going to wherever, however many schools you may be trying to decide between. Try to go to as many of those as possible because it gives you the best sense um, of the school um, and kind of what's what it has to offer. Um, but I still found value of visiting even before that and doing the kind of prospective student stuff as well. Great. Anyone else? So earlier we talked a little bit about uh, taking classes at Greater Yale. Uh, curious if anyone has gotten involved in any extracurriculars or taken advantage of uh, Yale as a whole uh, during their time as a student here. Gosh, <laughs> done way too many extracurriculars. Um, yeah, so I've worked at the Center for Business and the Environment called CBay for the, my my um, my three years here as a joint degree, running this uh, program on climate change innovation. So through that, I developed an accelerator for students across Yale. I ran a grant program and also did an interview series with GreenBiz. Um, I've also been doing research with a professor at SOM in organizational behavior, and we're now co-writing a paper together, and potentially um, that might lead to a book. 
Some minor stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else engaged with the greater community? Um, I'm uh, creating or working on creating a, a startup. So uh, I'm part of the Thai City Accelerator, which is the, the accelerator at Yale. And we meet every uh, Friday, and they help you out with your with your startup. They give you funding, um, and they like, yeah, they basically help you out to build the product and and uh, send it to market. Um, no, I think I think that was basically. Right, cool. um, so as a quick thing, we're trying uh, to start a Boy Scout troop for uh, the refugee community in New Haven, Connecticut, actually punches well above its weight as far as accepting refugees. Um, and so we're trying to get that going. That's been a cool experience working with other undergrads. There's another uh, grad student um, from, I think, the Divinity School. Um, so that's been a pretty cool pretty cool experience. Hopefully, we'll be successful. Okay. Um, one last specific question to the, the bankers. Uh, so any, are there any specific coverage groups where SOM alums are more represented based on what you know? I think it varies really widely at different banks. So at my bank in particular, we're, we have a really strong presence in the healthcare group, and that's the group I'll be going into full time. Um, but I think it really varies very widely. Yeah, I would just second that. It, yeah, it depends on the bank. I think we've got alumni in all different groups. Okay, great. So we have just a couple of minutes left. I was going to ask if anything uh, you would you would uh, say to an applicant at this point, just a final farewell. This is what you should do. This is why this place is great. Uh, maybe I'll go down the line here and just anything else anybody wants to add. And it's okay if there's not. <laughs> maybe one thing, like if you're hesitant or you're sort of wondering about if you want to go back to school, I think one concern I had was disengaging from the professional community. And I think that it's really incredible how plugged in you can remain to the professional community while you're here, whether it's through independent studies or um, sort of client-based uh, projects and classes. Like this is definitely not sort of stepping away from the work world. If anything, it's just helping you kind of pivot and re-engage in a different way. Um, yeah, I think if you have like a clear motivation, even if you're not really sure about what you want to do for your internship or after school, I think having that motivation is like reason enough to just apply and see what happens. And I think typically it tends to work out. Some or another. Yeah, I think the opportunities here are just incredible and ones that you're not going to have anywhere else. The people you meet, the professors you get exposed to. I just have had such an incredible time over the past year plus and uh, looking forward to the rest of the my second year here. Um, so I guess sitting in your shoes, you're probably stressed out and everything seems chaotic and you have no idea if it will work out. Um, it will work out in some way or another. Just kind of keep, keep plugging away. It's a similar kind of uncertainty when you're trying to find your internship and you're trying to figure out all these big life questions and, and it seems like, you know, can be feel overwhelming, um, but you'll have a huge community here of support and kind of just keep plugging away with the application process. Um, and I think it's, it's really valuable, especially if you didn't know what to do next, just the value of having all the companies and people and things just here. I mean, you could, in theory, sit in Google and try to find a new job, but um, this is a very different kind of life-changing, if not to be too grand, but like this is a really big experience that you'll have here. So I highly recommend it and just keep, it's. It's miserable right now, probably, but just keep going with it. It'll, it'll work out. Yeah, I would say it has been by far my, uh, like, one of the best experiences that I have had. And, um, and like, I think, like, as, as most of, of uh, the panel said, like, either if you want to, like, totally switch career or, or, or as I want to, like, go back to the same field that, that, uh, that I want to, like, there are opportunities for both, so you can take advantage of those. Great. Well, I thank our panel for our time. Hopefully they gave you some great information as you kind of set down this path. Uh, if you have more questions or are interested in more information, I encourage you to connect with the admissions office. Uh, you can also check out their student ambassador list, which is listed by industry on their website, to ask more specific questions about finance or any of the other industries that you're interested in. Uh, so from here at SOM, we thank you for participating, and uh, we look. hopefully we'll see you soon. Have a great day. <laughs>